Good afternoon. Okay, this is the last day. We are going to begin with this session. So uh, first I'm going to thank uh, all of you because of your time. Uh, I know that it's kind of uh, complicated to uh, be here in this hour uh, because I know that many of you are in your uh, jobs and you are like giving some time to this kind of um this kind of of things because you are learning a new language and um i know that it's like a sacrifice to be here in this moment uh doing this kind of activities but you know also that this one is part of the process in which you are going to gain more knowledge and you are going to improve not just your life, but also your um, laboral uh, environment. Esta es la última sesión, ¿verdad? Estamos terminando el día de hoy con el módulo. Eh, solo, ¿verdad? Agradecerles por su tiempo por estar uh, aquí, ¿verdad? En este momento, eh, sé que es difícil para todos nosotros, ¿verdad? Tener un tiempo libre para hacer este tipo de cosas. Yo sé que la mayoría está en su trabajo y tiene que eh, dejar una hora en específico para poder estar en estas sesiones, pero esta ya es la última. Yo creería que ustedes van a tener un pequeño receso de sus, eh, de sus clases de inglés, ¿verdad? Por un par de días. Y ustedes pueden aprovechar esto, ¿verdad? Para sus otras actividades y para sus labores. En este caso, nosotros estamos terminando el módulo con esta sesión y vamos a trabajar en la parte final de la sección número 5 y también nos vamos a enfocar un poco en el examen final. Si usted ya terminó su examen, increíble, buen trabajo, usted ya está libre de esa eh, actividad. Si usted no ha logrado completar el examen, lo vamos a ir haciendo despacio en esta sesión para ir parte por parte, ¿verdad? Eh, recordando información que ya estuvimos viendo en lo que son las sesiones anteriores. Si hay alguna actividad que usted no logró completar o con la que tuvo algún problema, este es momento para que usted pueda eh, pedir ayuda, ¿verdad? Para esa actividad, se, re, se va a revisar la actividad y se va a ir dando como un feedback de lo que estuvimos viendo, ¿verdad? Relacionado a esa actividad. Pero si usted ya lo completó todo, pues, esto solo es eh, como un review. Lo vamos a ver como un review esta, esta sesión. So, um, we were talking about different topics during this month because um, we have four days per week. And in this case, we have four different weeks in which we were, like, working with different topics. We are going to make like um, a review of the things that we were seeing from the first day. That is the information that we have on the document. Remember that I said to you at the beginning of the course that um, I'm going to have this document available um, even when you are not in the, uh, when, we are not in the in the module. Este, es, eh, este documento va a quedar disponible, ¿verdad? Para que ustedes lo puedan revisar siempre que lo necesiten. No los elimino, no los eh, cierro, ¿verdad? Después de los módulos, sino que quedan allí un tiempo. Ya ha pasado unos cuantos meses, sí, obviamente se van a eliminar o se van a borrar las informaciones de los documentos. Pero en este momento van a quedar habilitados por un par de meses. In this case, we were like working in different topics. In this case, we were talking about transportation and um, we were like reading some uh, conversations and we were, were playing or practicing the information that we have about the vocabulary related to the air transportation. We were talking about transportation in the US uh, some examples that we made with this topic. We have this conversation. 
Then we were talking about the simple present statements. Uh, we learned how to create statements uh, with the verb to be and with different uh, verbs in this case. And also we were like talking about the difference between uh, the uh, positive statement, the negative statement and the questions. And we were talking about the regular and, and irregular verbs, the difference between uh, the regular and irregular verbs. How can we understand the use of the verbs? Uh, we were talking about the pronouns, the different pronouns that we have in English. Uh, then we have negative statements, irregular verbs. We have a list of irregular verbs. In this case, just as an example, then we have um, the review of the simple present tense. In, in this case, we have here the, uh, the uses of the present tense. Um, also, we have the uses that we can give to this, uh, state, uh, to this tense. In this case, we have four different things in which we can apply the information or the structure of the present simple. Um, then we have some questions. Then we have the vocabulary about houses uh, in which we were like uh, seeing the different uh, elements that we can find in our house. We have different um, lists of, ver of words. Tenemos diferentes listados, ¿verdad? En los que aparecen las palabras eh, o los elementos que podemos encontrar en cada una de las habitaciones, ¿verdad? De nuestra casa. Teníamos luego Job Vocabulary. Es un vocabulario aplicado a los diferentes trabajos. In which we have the English word, the Spanish word, and the example. And it's like a very long list because we have 15 words in which we know uh, what is the meaning or the translation of the word into Spanish. Then we were talking about the different expressions um, and how to answer those questions uh, with the words I work at, I work in, I work for, and I work with. Then we have the WH questions. That is a very important topic in which we need to pay a lot of attention because we need to, to create different uh, questions during our um, conversations. It's necessary to create questions and to know how to answer those questions. And in this table, we have that information. We have the WH word. We have what is the usage of the word and some examples to apply that information related to the WH words. Then we have here how to form these questions. And in this case, we have the use of the auxiliaries. And when we are not using auxiliaries, Next topic is the reduction or do and does in the pronunciation. We have some examples in which we were like um, explaining how to pronounce the words and in which we are not like feeling the whole thing. In this case, it's just to making um short. Then we have the adjectives in which we were explaining what is an adjective? What are the uses that we can give to the adjectives? And also that, what is the use of these words? We have some examples of adjectives. And in this case, we have like um, the different jobs that uh, applies with this information. Then we have the job, the job profile in which we were reading some information related to different jobs. In this case, we were applying the uh, reading skill and some different abilities that we need to, to develop uh, when we are reading. We have here the topic food in which we were explaining different kind of food. We were talking about the food pyramid in which we have different categories uh, of food that we need to, to know. Then we were like creating some vocabulary in which we were talking about the different types of food. We have beverage, drinks, 
dairy, dessert, fruit, grain, starches, meat, fish, and vegetables. And also we have a list of adjectives that we can use to describe this food. We have vocabulary related to cooking food. We have vocabulary about supermarket, about containers, and we have um, the food that we like and don't like. Then we have the count and noun count nouns that is very related to the food because in this case we can apply this information to the different kind of foods that we know. And we have the difference between the countable and uncountable nouns, some examples, um, definitions, and the categories of noun count nouns. Then we have the quantity words that are used also with this kind of information in which we were like um, understanding what are those words and what are the uses. Así que en este caso, como estamos hablando de la comida o de lo, del vocabulario de comida, ya estuvimos viendo diferentes elementos que también se pueden aplicar a esa información. Como es los nombres contables y no contables y también los o las palabras que utilizamos para hablar de las cantidades, que son estas quantity words. Then we have the traditional breakfast dishes, que son como los, um, los desayunos típicos, ¿verdad? De diferentes países. Estuvien, estuvimos viendo comida from Egypt, Eastern Africa, Tanzania, eh, China, Bangladesh, South India, North India, Iran, Japan, Korea, Australia. We have two different eh, eh, foods from Australia. We have Spain, United Kingdom, and Costa Rica. Uh, in that case, we had more uh, breakfast, but in this case, we have just these examples. Then we were talking about the advert of frequency in which we were explaining the, uh, the um, we can say like, uh, how can we use or how can we apply the different adverbs into um daily life conversation, tenemos el tipo de frecuencia, ¿verdad? Que tan seguido hacemos una actividad, eh, ¿cuál es el adverbio que se aplica en ese, en ese caso? Algunos ejemplos, ¿verdad? Aplicando estos adverbs. También estuvimos aprendiendo cómo eh, ponerlo, ¿verdad? La posición que lleva dentro de una oración, different structures, eh, some examples. Then we have here, the sports, we were talking about sports, that is uh, from this week. Uh, we have different sports, we have images that um, let you know what kind of a sport we were talking about. We have, uh, in this case, sports and games. Uh, we have extreme sports and sport and exercise actions. Also, we were talking about the seasons, the different seasons that we have. During the year, we have some words that we can um, like uh, make a link with the different uh, seasons. And also we have uh, information about uh, some sports, in this case is the basketball. The, the, the first thing about the basketball or the person that, that created the basketball um, and some information more. Así que en ese caso, nuestra última semana estuvo uh, basada más que todo en deportes, en las estaciones del año, en información de ese tipo. Y aquí tenemos también lo que es el artículo que estuvimos leyendo. También eh, vimos un poco sobre pronunciación, el can y el can't, cómo podemos nosotros pronunciar esas dos palabras. Y la última parte que es lo de talent and abilities, que son los talentos y habilidades, qué cosas se consideran talentos, qué cosas se consideran habilidades y cómo podemos nosotros, ¿verdad?, eh, dividir esos talentos y habilidades. En este caso, ¿cómo fue lo que estuvimos? Um... Ay, let me see. Uh, estoy al principio. Acá. Estamos viendo, ¿verdad?, de, de cómo se desarrolla esto. Ya decíamos ayer, the talent is something that we are good in a specific area. 
And in the talent is that you have this skill naturally. Ahí sí hacíamos nosotros nuestra diferencia de que uno es algo en lo que nosotros somos eh, buenos, ¿verdad? Um, en una situación en específico. Y el otro es que ya traemos, ¿verdad? Como la madera, se dice, ¿verdad? La madera para, um, para poder realizar esa actividad. Así que esas son como las, las cosas que hemos estado trabajando en estas cuatro semanas. Eh, y vamos a continuar con una parte de la plataforma. We're going to go to the platform and we are going to watch a video in which we have a, we have an article in which we are going to read some information related to a race. Um, and we have like different elements. In this case, it's related to American races and you are going to um, apply this skill of reading for a specific information in, in which you are going to find a specific information related to this topic. And then we are going to solve the uh, knowledge check that we have in the section number five, that is the last one. And then we are going to enter the final exam. So we are going to watch the video. So we are going to pay, pay attention to the um, article that appears here. Then we are going to make like a discussion about the information that we have on the video. So let's pay attention. Hi, everyone. In this class, you'll read an article about four unique American races. You'll also develop skills in reading for specific information. Race the U.S. Climb the stairs of New York City's Empire State Building in the Empire State Building run-up. The climb is 1,050 feet, 320 meters, 86 floors, or 1,575 steps. Winners can reach the top in just 10 to 11 minutes. Can you? Take eight or ten days to race across America, from Irvine, California, to Savannah, Georgia. Cross the entire U.S. in this 2,900-mile, 4,667-kilometer bicycle race. In this race, there are no timeouts for sleep. For eight to ten days, racers can sleep only about three hours each day. Race on the exciting white waters of the Arkansas River in the Downriver Race. Winners complete the 25.7 miles, 41.5 kilometers, in just two hours. This is the longest Downriver Race in the U.S. One person, one boat, take the challenge. Only possible in Alaska, the Iditarod Sled Dog Race. Race from downtown Anchorage to Nome, over 1,150 miles, 1,850 kilometers, through cold, wind, and snow. Winners usually finish the course in 9 to 12 days and receive cash prizes. Okay, let's see this uh, information. We have different races in the U.S. Son diferentes carreras, ¿verdad? Que se llevan a cabo en Estados Unidos. So in this case, we're going to begin with the um, race across America. Que es la primera que tenemos por ahí. Take eight or ten days to race across America from Irving, Carolina to Savannah, Georgia. Dice que toma de ocho a diez días hacer la carrera a través de América, que empieza desde Irving, California, y se termina en Savannah, Georgia. Cross the entire U.S. in this 2,900 mile. That it, it, it's, um, está hablando, ¿verdad? Que, el, um, que son 2,900 millas, o sea, el, el, la distancia, ¿verdad? Que tienen de un lugar a otro, que esto equivale a 4,667 kilómetros. 
But in this case, it's related to a bicycle race. Es una carrera en bicicleta. In this race, there are no timeouts from sleep, for sleep. For 80 to 10 days, the racers can sleep only about three hours each day. En esta carrera no hay como eh, tiempo muerto, ¿verdad? O tiempo fuera para dormir. De los 8 a 10 días, los concursantes de esta carrera solo pueden dormir aproximadamente tres horas cada día. Now, in the second one, climb the stairs of the New York City Empire State Building in the Empire State Building run up. The climbing is 1,050 feet. That is related to 320 um, meters, 86 floors, or 1,575 steps. Este es una carrera, es un, um, podemos decir que están escalando, pero es subir, ¿verdad? Las, las gradas, ¿verdad? Del, del, eh, del New York uh, City Empire State Building. Es un um, edificio, ¿verdad? Que eh, tiene 1,050 pies, dos, que son 320 metros de altura, son 86 pisos. Y se tiene que dar 1,575 pasos para subirlo. Winners can reach the top in just 2 to 11 minutes. Can you? Tienen que, bueno, los ganadores pueden llegar hasta la parte más alta del edificio en 10 o 11 minutos. Imagínense subir eh, 86 pisos corriendo en 11 minutos. It's like kind of crazy. Number three. Only possible in Alaska, the Tarot Sled Dog Race. Race from downtown Archeray to Nam over 1,115 miles. That is uh, 1,815 1, kilometers uh, through cold wine and snow. Winners usually finish the course in 9 to 12 days and receive cash prizes. Esto solo sucede en Alaska, ¿verdad? Es una carrera donde obviamente llevan perros eh, para este tipo de, de carreras. La carrera empieza, ¿verdad? Desde el centro de la ciudad, uh, que es Anchorage, hasta Nome, que son alrededor de 1,150 millas, que equivalen a 1,850 kilómetros a través del de frío, ¿verdad? El viento y la nieve. Los ganadores usualmente terminan este curso, esta carrera, de 9 a 12 días y reciben dinero en efectivo. The last one, number four, race on the exciting white waters of the Arkansas River in the Down River Race. Winners complete the 25.7 miles, that is 41.5 kilometers, in just two hours. This is the longest Down River Race in the U.S., one person, one boat. Take the challenge. Esta es una eh, carrera. Aquí tenemos, si se fijan, son diferentes eh, metodologías. One is by bicycle. The second one is by, um, like, we can say, like, by feet. The third one is, like, with dogs. And the last one is by water. Entonces, en este caso, estamos hablando de agua, ¿verdad? Es una carrera en agua donde... Eh, se van al río de Arkansas y tienen esta carrera. Los ganadores, ¿verdad? Completan los 25.7 millas que equivalen a 41.5 kilómetros en solo dos horas. Es como la carrera, ¿verdad? Río abajo más larga eh, de Estados Unidos. Una persona, un bote y obviamente se toma el, um, como la carrera, ¿verdad? Se toma el challenge. Now, we are going to go to the, uh, the knowledge check, that is the 5.14, in which we are going to read the articles that are the ones that we have read, and we are going to like answer the questions that it has all of them. There are three questions for each uh, part of the article. Son tres preguntas por cada uno de los... Uh, de las informaciones que tenemos de las diferentes carreras de Estados Unidos. Entonces, en este caso, vamos a dejar de race across 
America. That is the first one, and we have three questions, but we are going to have this one. In the place, the distance, and winning times. So you can read again this part of the article, and then I'm going to ask you the answer. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes, and then you are going to tell me the answer. Voy a darles un par de minutos para que puedan eh, leer un poco la información y también puedan um, encontrar la respuesta correcta. Después de pasados unos dos, tres minutos, vamos a dar las respuestas a cada una de las preguntas. Okay, in this case, we have the answer for the number one. And we have here that in place is from Irving, California to Savannah, Georgia. And distance, we have 2,900 miles. That corresponds to 4,667 kilometers. And winning time, we have eight to 10 days. Now we have the down river race. place uh, from California. Okay. But give me a second, give me a second. This one is down river race. Okay. Uh, in the In the number three, what is the place? Place Alaska, Arkansas. Uh huh, Arkansas River. Okay. Distance number one, two, or three. Number two. Okay. Very good. And winning time? Two hours. Two hours, okay, very good. Now we are in Edi Tarot Sled Dog Race. In which place? Alaska. Alaska, Alaska very good. <clears throat> Distance, number one, two, or three? Three. One, number one. three. Okay, winning time? Nine to twelve days. Okay, nine to twelve days. Okay, let's see. 
Very good. All of them are correct. So in this case, we have it in number one, Arkansas River. Number two, 25.7 miles. Winning time, two hours. Then we have a, this one is Alaska, 1,150 miles and 9 to 12 days. Very good. Aquí completamos lo que es la sección número 5. En este caso, solo nos queda revisar lo que es el examen final. Así que vamos a pasar al examen final para ver qué partes o qué elementos se están evaluando en ese examen final. Ok, in this case is listening. La primera parte tiene que ver con el listening. And we are going to listen to, to four people describe their homes. Number the picture from one to four. Uh, type the numbers in letters. Do not need a capital letter or a period. Aquí solo vamos a enumerar las imágenes del 1 al 4, donde se van a escribir los números en letras, mayús en letras sin mayúsculas ni puntos. Así que vamos a escuchar este audio and we are going to do it twice to understand what are the people saying about their houses. So let's see first, I mean, let's hear first the audio and then we are going to watch the images and we are going to write the number of the, um, the person that is talking about the house. So let's listen to the audio first and then we are going to continue with the answers. Page 45, exercise four, listening. It has just one room. Listen to four people describe their homes. Number the pictures from one to four. One. My family lives on the first floor of a house. Another family lives on the second floor. The people on the second floor are nice, but they're not very quiet. 2. My apartment is very small. It has just one room with a very small kitchen. It doesn't have a bedroom, so I sleep on the sofa. 3. I live in an apartment downtown. It's on the fifth floor of an interesting old building. I have a great view of the city, and I'm close to lots of stores and restaurants. 4. My family and I live in an old white house in the country. The house is a little small, but we have a big yard. We like it a lot. Page 45, exercise four, listening. It has just one room. Listen to four people describe their homes. Number the pictures from one to four. One. My family lives on the first floor of a house. Another family lives on the second floor. The people on the second floor are nice, but they're not very quiet. Two. My apartment is very small. It has just one room with a very small kitchen. It doesn't have a bedroom, so I sleep on the sofa. Three. I live in an apartment downtown. It's on the fifth floor of an interesting old building. I have a great view of the city, and I'm close to lots of stores and restaurants. Four. My family and I live in an old white house in the country. The house is a little small, but we have a big yard. We like it a lot. Okay, that was the audio program related to, to the different houses. So we are going to give the answers for this uh, exercise. So in this case, the first image is related to what number? One, two, three, or four? Three. Three. Okay, the second one is related to? Two. 
four. Okay. Number three. Two. And the last one, of course, it is number one. Okay, very good. Excellent. Now we are going to see the second one. In this case, we're going to complete the conversation with the use of some or any. El uso del some y el any para completar nuestra conversación. Vamos a comenzar con la primera. Well, we have lots of tomatoes. Let's make any or some. Um. Some. Then, okay, do we have some or any, any lemon? Any lemon. Okay. Then, no, we need to buy some or any? Some. We need some or any lettuce too? Some. Some, okay. Oh, I don't want some or any lettuce. I hate lettuce. Any. Then let's get some or any. Some or any. Some. Some, okay. No, I don't want some or any. 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 Let's put some or any. Some cucumber. Some cucumber in it. Okay, any. let's check. Okay, very good. All of them are correct. Some, any, some, some, any, some, any, and some. In this case, we are going to choose the correct adjective to complete the sentence. In this case, we are going to read the uh, statements and we're going to choose the best one. In this case, is like the correct uh, position of the adverb of frequency. Vamos a leer las oraciones. Vamos a dejar hasta la número cuatro para que decidan si está correcta o incorrecta dependiendo de cómo se aplicó el, ad, el adjetivo. En este caso, I mean, the adverb in this uh, statement. Así que vamos a dar un eh, par de minutos para que analicemos la formación de estas oraciones y luego decimos si es correcto o no.
Okay, now, what are the answers for this one? Number one, never I play soccer on weekends. Correct or it's, incorrect? It's incorrect. Incorrect, okay. Number two, they usually study English at night. Correct or incorrect? Correct. Okay, correct. Number three, sometimes she feels very tired. Correct. Correct. Number four, he often call her in the morning. Correct or incorrect? Incorrect. Incorrect. You listen to me hardly ever. Correct or incorrect? Incorrect. Incorrect. Okay, let's check. Okay, all of them are correct. Están correctas todas. La primera es incorrecta. La segunda es correcta. La tercera correcta también. Número cuatro incorrecta. Y número cinco incorrecta. Now, we are going to see the next one. Choose the correct meaning of the WH question word. En esta, ustedes ya saben cuáles son los significados eh, que se le da a cada una de estas WH words. Vamos a ver. Who is related to time, place, people, choice, thing, or object? People. People. Very good. Next one, where, time, place, people, choice, thing, or object? Place. Place, very good. When is related to time, place, people, choice, thing, or object? The number three is time. Is time, okay. Which time, place, people, choice, thing, object? Thing, object. Okay. Aha, uh -huh. someone say choice and someone say thing. What is the correct answer? Choice or thing? Choice. Choice. Okay, let's look for choice. And the last one, what? Time, place, people, choice, thing, or object? Thing or object. Okay, let's see. All of them are correct. Who is related to people? Where is related to place? When is related to time? Which is related to a choice? And what is related to things or objects? Very good. In this case, we're going to read the following sentences and we're going to choose either can or can't and we're just going to type the word in. We are not going to use capital letter or period in this case. Aquí solo vamos a decidir que vamos a poner can or can't en la posición correcta. A couple of minutes, un par de minutos, dos minutos como máximo y damos nuestra respuesta.
Okay, let's answer this exercise. So in the number one, I am very hungry. I can't or can't eat everything right now. Can. Can. Ashida can or can't run very fast. Can run very fast. Can. Maria can't or can you help me? Can you help me? Okay. Mm -hmm. I can or can't do my homework. It's too difficult. I can. I can't. A baby can't or can't drive a car. Baby can't. Can't. Can. Okay. Okay, very good. Excellent. We are almost done. So in this one, we're uh, going to complete the conversation. We are going to select the option that completes the two blank fields in each sentence. Vamos a seleccionar la opción que completa las dos, los dos campos en blanco de cada oración. En este caso, vamos a ver estas tres para ver cuáles son las opciones que mejor le quedan a esta frase. Again, a couple of minutes and then you are going to give me the answer for the exercise. Okay, let's see. Number one, uh, we are going to begin with Linda. You in an apartment. Do lives, does lives, do live, or does live? Do live. Do... Okay, in this case, do you live in an apartment? Okay, Chris, no, I, I in a house. Doesn't lives, does don't live, doesn't live, and don't lives.
One, two, three, or four. Do life, yeah. And the number two. Number two, don't lie. Don't lie, okay. Next one, number three. Do you have, oh. does have, oh. do haves, or does have? Does have. Does have, okay. Next one, yes, it? Does. Does. Next one, that sounds nice. Do you live alone? Do you live alone, okay. Chris, no, I, I with my family. No, I don't live with my family. Okay, I don't live with my family. That sounds nice. You, any brother or sister? Do you have? Do you have? Okay. Yes, I, I for sisters. Does have, do have, do haves, or does haves? Do haves. Do have. Do have. Do have. Okay. Really? Your house, many bedrooms? Does your house have many bedrooms? Does. We're going to begin with does. Does have. Do have, okay. Yes, it, it, four. What is the correct answer? Um, Chris says, Chris, 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 Chris. do. Do. Oh, perdón, 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 no. Yes. Yes. Do has. Does has. Okay. Next one. You, your own bedroom. Do have. Do have. Do have. Okay. And the last one, yes, I am really lucky. Do. Do. Okay. Let's check this one. Ah, it says parcialmente correcto. What is the mistake? This one. Do have, really? Do your house have many bedrooms? Number one. Number Do one. Does have. Okay, let's see. Yes, that is the correct answer. Ahí está la respuesta correcta. Okay, aquí tenemos nuestras respuestas, ¿verdad? Número uno, do live, don't live, does have, does, do live, don't live, do have, do have again, does have, does has, do have, and do. So we complete all the sections on the platform and also we complete the final exam. So in this case, we are done with all of the work that we had for this course. So this is the end of the course and uh, you have completed all of the activities and all of the information that we have for this, um, for this month. So in this case, as I was saying at the beginning of the meeting, I just want to say thank you um, to you because you are giving your time to complete these kind of activities to improve your uh, skills and also to improve your, um, your information and your knowledge. 
So keep going and complete all the activities that you have for your future because you are going to complete all the goals that you have in your mind. Así que gracias por este tiempo y hemos llegado al final del curso. Espero que sigan adelante con los cursos y lleguen hasta el final para ir mejorando en la adquisición del idioma. Así que nos quedamos hasta acá. Ha sido un placer y sigan adelante con sus cursos de inglés. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.